Hi there, and welcome to this tutorial for motion matching for Unity. In this tutorial, we're going to take a look at angular error warping and what it can do for us. So what is angular error warping? It sounds like a bit of a mouthful and it's not really clear what it does. Well, basically, angular error warping provides a procedural rotation of the character to help improve responsiveness and to cover coverage gaps in our animation. Okay, so I thought I'd just illustrate this to make it a little bit more clear. So hypothetically, let's say we're looking down at our character from the sky, and this is our character viewed from the top. And he's facing not perfectly straight up, he's facing at a slight angle of say 10 degrees from, from looking that way, um, looking up the screen. Now, this is obviously gonna happen all the time and you have your character that's there. Now, if the, if the player then pushes on the stick perfectly forward, he's gonna send a trajectory out um, that's something like, like this. So that's gonna be his trajectory. It's gonna be straight forward. The problem is because we're only at this slightly 10 degree angle, we don't have a you know, run forward start 10 degrees, 10 left because we wouldn't capture that many animations. Even if we're doing mocap, we wouldn't capture that much uh, granularity in the degree angles. We'd probably go for 45 degree angles at most 22.5 degrees. So what's gonna happen is the closest trajectory that it's gonna find is going to be something like this. And clearly, What's happened now is we're running in the incorrect direction. Obviously, only if you're using root motion, but even if you're not using root motion, the character is still gonna be rotated the wrong way. So we need to compensate for this somehow. And we, by what, how we do this is with angular error warping, we're going to rotate our character by whatever this angle is over time. So let's say this is 10 degrees or something over say 0.5 seconds or whatever. It's all based on your settings in the MXM animator we're gonna rotate our character so that, you know, in let's say 0.5 seconds time, our character is now facing this way perfectly. And therefore our, um, you know, our trajectory is still the same for our desired trajectory. And our actual trajectory is going to also match it. And of course, I'm just drawing it next to it. It's uh, just, so they're not on top of each other. So now our trajectory matches and we're running in the right direction. If we do this in a short enough time, say 0.5 seconds, um, then it's not gonna be noticeable and we can get that rotation. We run in the, the correct direction. So that is angular error warping in a nutshell. Let's have a look at the gizmos and see what's happening here. You can see that no matter what we do, the animation gets rotated over time until that point matches. If I plant, you can see it gets rotated at the end there so that it matches up. Now, the other thing we can notice with angular error warping is responsiveness of turns. Now, if I run in a circle, you'll see that he can run quite tightly. Now, if you were to look at the animations for this, you would actually notice that they're not nearly as responsive as this and the arc is much wider. So angular error warping can create a much better responsiveness in gameplay and make it feel better to play. So let's have a look at this in the inspector. Now we don't even have to close play mode because this can all be changed at runtime, either through the inspector or through code. Now we don't need any of these. We can go straight to the warping section. And we can see this angular error warping is set to procedural. Let's turn it off and see what happens when we don't have it on. Firstly, let's try the arcs. Now here you see the arcing turns and they're just so much wider, so much less responsive not nearly as fun to play with. So that is one thing that it can help you do, just make your turns faster. Of course, the more you use the procedural warping for that, the more you're gonna have problems with um, uh, it, it, you know, quality looking less, you might have some foot sliding, but there's a balance of where that's good. The other thing is that when we turn, say we do a plant, it's gonna take a really long time for um, it to guarantee you to be going in the same direction. Now, fortunately, we're using the blend space system and you can see that it's using those different poses to try and compensate for the angle, but it's much, much, much slower. Maybe that is actually what you want. However, um, so you can see that it's turning using the arcs, but it's much, much, much slower. 
So let's turn it back on and we'll see the difference procedural. And if it's just a small amount, it just turns on the spot really quick. And only if we really bank hard does it start using the banks. So what are all the settings here? So the next setting is warp method. Now the main method you're gonna use 99% of the time is current heading. Uh, this is specifically for use when you're running in the direction that you wanna go. You're facing the direction you're running like we are now. Now there's two other settings um, and one is used for strafing and one is just a different method. So we've got current heading is our main one, this trajectory heading. Now this can work with some animation sets but I find most of the time it has problems like we're seeing now. The animation it's playing is actually an arc but it's we should be running straight at this point. And it's basically just a different way of calculating the error. Um, most of the time this you don't want to use this and it may even be deprecated in the future. So I don't recommend using trajectory heading if you're running in the direction you're going. Now, the last setting is for trajectory facing. Now this is used specifically for um, strafing and I don't have an example of strafing in this particular demo. So we're not going to see it. Basically it calculates the error differently again, but it's based on the facing angle of these arrows rather than the, you know, the vector from the character to the last trajectory point. So that's really important. If you're going to use strafing and you're going to have to change this to trajectory facing, you may even need to change this at runtime and the API is there. You can look up that in the manual. So let's have a look at the settings now. So warp rate, that's how fast the warp happens. I've got it set to 90 degrees per second. Let's pump that up really fast to 180 degrees per second. You'll see now how fast I can run. At this point, I mean in circles, at this point it's starting to look silly. Let's pump it up to 360 and we basically can spin on the spot and it looks kind of dumb and you wouldn't really do this, but it's good to demonstrate exactly what's going on with the system here. We can put it really low to say 30 degrees per second and we still get a bit of warping, um, but it's not nearly as responsive. For this demo um, and for the feel of the gameplay that I wanted, I chose 90 degrees per second. And that gives a nice responsive turn for me. You're gonna have to play around with this and figure out what works for you, what works for your game. You know, maybe your game is supposed to be a little more weighty. Maybe it's supposed to be really fast and responsive, your choice. The next is the distance threshold. Now, most of the time you're gonna leave this at 0.5. Basically, this is to stop the warping happening when you're standing still and idle, and also when you're just going really slow. So basically, it means that if, uh, if the trajectory length of this last point is, um, if the distance to that length, that point, is less than 0.5, so when we're idle, for example, then it's not gonna apply the trajectory error warping. Uh, let, I'll chuck it up to something like 10 and you'll see now I don't get any of that warping at all because our trajectory I think only goes out to about 6 meters. But most of the time you can leave it really low, 0 0.5 meters, it's not going to kick in. The last is another threshold but it's for angle in front of us. So I'm going to use a drawing to illustrate this again. So if we have a character here and they're facing this direction, we can think of that angular threshold as this kind of cone in front of the character. So say that your your angular error threshold is 90 degrees, it's gonna be this 90 degree cone in front of you. So basically what we're saying with this angular threshold is that if our trajectory, if our desired trajectory is within this threshold, so say it's something like there, you got all these points along it, then it will apply the um, the error warping. However, if your trajectory last, if the last point of your trajectory is you know outside of that cone, then it's not going to apply the trajectory error warping. If we look at say a trajectory that's like a plant, we might have something like this, and in this case, it's not going to apply the trajectory error warping because our last point is outside of that ninety degree cone. And this is really important because for things like a plant, we don't want it to rotate the character. Otherwise we're gonna get foot sliding and it's gonna look really ugly. Now I've obviously set this really high to 135. So that cone is really wide. So the warping is gonna happen anywhere. If you want warping to happen all the time, no matter what, maybe you don't even have any plants. And so you're gonna to have to, you know, really smash up the angular threshold so your character can basically turn without plants at all. Uh, if we put it lower, say 90, we can 
uh, have it only at 90. Obviously my running arcs are compensating a lot uh, since we're using the blend spaces for that. But if you didn't have those arcs, you know, and you want your plants to happen more, you lower that threshold. Basically these thresholds stop the animation angular error warping kicking in within a certain distance and within a certain angle. I found 135 was pretty good for this demo. I wanted it to kick in most of the time. So how do we then control specific animation poses and say, do not use the angular error warping at specific points. Now, if we look at this plant animation, you can see there's a part of the plant animation where the warping just doesn't happen. And we really wouldn't want that to happen because he's got his foot planted. If we suddenly rotated the character, that foot would slide in a circle around the character's um, you know, root position. We don't want that at all. So we want to have the power to disable this warping at specific poses. And that is done with our timeline. So let's go and close this and go to our preprocessor. Okay, so I've found the right preprocessor now and I wanna look at this plant 180. So let's preview that and let's hit play on that. So we can see there's our plant. Oh, it runs into the box, it's annoying. So we wanna actually use the timeline now to tell him, tell the system do not use angular error warping while he's doing that plant. So how do we do this? Now we need to change the timeline to a different mode and that's the utility mode. And we'll see we get all these tracks. These tracks are always here by default. You don't add them in. Now, specifically, we want to look at disable trajectory warp. And just like any other tag track that we've learned in other tagging things, we can add a tag to that section. We can change the length and move it around. Now you can actually see that I've already tagged this animation from this point here to this point there to not warp. In fact, I'm going to drag it out a bit further. I think I don't want it to warp till that point. So we get the full fidelity of the animation and then the angular error warping can occur afterwards if that 180 plant didn't perfectly put us at the right angle. So when we pre-process that, that's going to mark up our animations with that disable trajectory warp tag. And that's a utility tag and the system automatically knows what to do with that. So that's different to the other tagging systems. And you'll notice there's a whole bunch of other utility tags and we're gonna go over those in a different tutorial. So that is angular error warping. Again, it, it allows you to have more responsive uh, turning animations for your character. And it also allows, makes sure that your character will 100% go in the direction you're pointing the stick, even if you don't have the animations to get you there through motion matching. Thank you all for watching and I will see you in the next video.